Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly, and, and this is the beautiful and brilliant and vivacious D, the great D. And we are grateful that you are with us and ready to go and ready to grow and ready to take it to another level tonight. We want to welcome everybody, whether you are new or first timers. Uh, we're glad you're here and we're just glad that you're able to join us. So welcome. Uh, for those who might be new, first timers don't know what, who we are, what we do. We're the Jollies. We wrote the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. And so we're very grateful for the book. Welcome, welcome, welcome for the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. And I'm grateful for my wife staying with me for almost 39 years now. So you can share where they can get more information. It's just quickly. You share it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to jollymarriage.com, see our TED Talk, and, 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 and get access to us. Let's talk about today's topic. Yes. Today's topic is how to handle an emotionally unsupportive spouse or partner and how to cope with an unsupportive coldness sometimes mm. in the relationship. The Kazaras have joined. Hi Thank there. you. We're grateful for y'all. And glad y'all are here. Thank you. For and y'all are in Weirton, West Virginia, consulting. Y'all are always busy. Praise the Lord. That's good. Um, okay. So the backstory. Backstory. <clears throat> what do you do when your spouse, when you're going through a tough time, like that, you're going through a very tough time in your life. Law, so Why don't you tell the the story? Okay. Yes. So that she shared. She we got a we had a first hand experience with a beautiful lady who told us that she was divorced and it was the result. The end story. It was the result of her not feeling supported after the loss of her dad. Mm. And she was very close to her dad. Now I found that interesting. I was like, her her marriage, her relationship with her spouse deteriorated after she lost her dad. Right. And and she said because he didn't support her. And it was such a profound conversation. I thought it was so profound and I, I kept getting more and more data and information. So we, we figured she probably not the only one going through this. And we gave her some advice on things that we recommended. But we want to talk to others about who might be going through a similar situation. Now, I'm glad Senior Terrence, but we, we missed him the last few weeks because we couldn't see his commentary, but he is starting off with a joke as usual. If a child refuses to sleep during nap time, are they guilty of resisting arrest? <laughs> He's so smart. He's so funny. Uh, Terrence has probably been the biggest, uh, him and the Cazeras, I have to give them both, the biggest supporters of Can promoting this book. Did Terrence have a birthday? For, Terrence, did you just have a birthday? If you did, put it in there. Uh, happy birthday for you, my man. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. All right, so this is the situation. And, I, and, and the conversation was such that he wasn't rude. He wasn't, the husband wasn't rude. He wasn't uh, nasty. He just was. And she didn't know how to tell him. She was really very articulate and very kind. They have a very kind relationship, even though they're, they're no longer married. Yeah, uh, they're, they're friends still. Uh, yes, uh, uh, and they co-parented co right. their children. Right, and so, I thought it was just an interesting conversation that we should delve into a little more. And what should she have done? We, we well, we know we, we we went right to what most well, look. Go back to what we talk about in the book. Marriages break up for one of three reasons: sex, money, communication. 
sex, money, communication. And that communication or lack thereof can have a great impact on your relationship in so many areas. So Tara, she just said something else. When I lost my son, I understand many people don't understand grief, correct. They don't understand grief if they've not been through it, one. And two, don't know how to communicate, communicate. their suffering. But it's two which sides. Is what she, which, is, which is what she shared. Yeah, it's two sides. She wasn't able to communicate what her, her pain and, and what her struggle. And what she needed. And what she needed. And maybe she didn't know what she needed. Correct. And he wasn't Didn't. able to, to connect. And, and what happened in this relationship, because there was that lack of communication, lack of warmness or connection during this time, they started to go apart. And they grew apart and they grew apart. Each they didn't know what the other person needed. That's correct. And then mm -hmm. they started sleeping in a different room. And one day, boom, the marriage was over. And so we want to help people. You know, this, this is not something that probably happened in a vacuum and that others have probably experienced some of these things. So what do you do when you feel your spouse is unsupportive, disconnected? Uh, what are the words that we got from that? Uh, uh, emotionally unsupportive, emotionally disconnected, might have some coldness detached those are the words that kept coming up in the conversations so what we wanted to say was we again we are marriage mentors not marriage counselors and therefore we don't give counseling we give mentorship and all of the situation we personally deal with have how we dealt with grief how we dealt with our loss right loss so we can only tell you that now for those who um, are not aware it's in all my books it's been widely communicated but somebody might not have heard in 2003 i lost my mother on uh april the 11th and 25 days later my brother and her father died on the same day so mom my brother and i and Les Brown eulogized her. And then, um, boom, a few days later, brother dies. And after brother dies, father-in-law dies, same day. So I think the answer is you have to force yourself to do what is already uncomfortable, which is to communicate. Right. And we were sharing that in terms of we talked about okay who, who are we going to bury first when his brother and my dad died on the same day we discussed well who do you think and and, and your brother had has a wife and, and a family mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of like everybody came together because we wanted to talk about it and you and i and, and, and my dad had remarried yes Mm -hmm. And she was in the loop. So how, how do, do we, the two of us, deal with that? We sat and talked but about first it. First, we talked about we it. We talked about it and said, what are we going to do? Asked you, what did you need? You asked me, what did I mm -hmm. need? We were both hurting. Uh, but we just supported each other. And I said, well, let's... let's we, so we, after we had the conversation... Then, uh, then we went on to share it with family. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, once, once we knew that the, the funeral was going to be around the same time, which one How do we best do here? To handle it. Which one we do there? Uh, so we always had a united front. So I, I don't remember who we who you eulogized first. Was it your brother or was it my dad? I don't, oh, I don't remember. Oh See, God, there's I don't so remember. I don't remember. I don't remember either. Okay, I don't remember which one we eulogized first. But we were lockstep in terms of support. Yeah. And I think the challenge is always sharing how you feel it has got to be i think we did my brother first uncomfortable yeah i think noble first and then your father so but i can't remember so okay there, there's this website called daily om daily om uh-huh like um yeah okay there's, there's this site called uh -huh. daily om there are lots of sites out there but they they, they talk about relationships mm -hmm. and they talk about how to become more open and just some questions and things that you need to ask. Okay. And, and within any of it, it starts with you. So 
You look mighty cute tonight, by the way. Thank you. Our, our son said, our son came in. He said, oh, you've got on pink because I don't normally wear color. I'm working on improving myself to have a pop of color on Monday nights. Huh? Oh. So I'm not, I'm not always stuck in the black. I love black, but I'm trying really hard to step outside of my comfort zone. I see. I'm very impressed. Thank you. So the first thing is evaluate yourself. Mm. Start with yourself. That's a pretty, that, that, that's kind of okay. like what we did in terms of well, what do you think we should do? We're both hurting. But where should we start? We yeah, don't know. We didn't know. So at least talk about it. So, so if you start with yourself, I'm struggling. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I, w- I told you I was struggling on my my uh, sleep. I was I was tired. I was just physically tired. And I told you, I said, I'm struggling. Now she gave, she jumped right in. She said, and this was like about three o'clock. Remember, I came upstairs and said, I'm struggling. I had been on the fast. Um, he had, had given up. I had given up coffee. It's the beginning of the year the church had this fast, and I thought it was wonderful because they gave up meat, and I don't eat meat anyway. And he was having withdrawal symptoms. From he coffee. gave up meat and Meat coffee. wasn't the problem. It was the coffee. Okay, the coffee. I, mean, I had a cup of coffee so every day. So he was struggling. I know you need to go I to bed. I came up around 3 o'clock and said, I'm really struggling. I mean, it's just, I'm so tired. She said, go to bed. And we just talked. She said, go to bed. And I took so her I, wise but counsel. Asked, but I asked the questions. I said, is something hurting? Where That's right. Is something wrong or something hurting? Mm-hmm. You, I said, no, I'm just mm-hmm. so tired. She said, okay, go to bed. Mm-hmm. Go to bed. I you really want to go to bed. No. I, I, I take a nap. You take a 10-minute nap at your desk. And I said, uh, are you, are, is there a medication or something you're taking? No. Did you take your vitamins like you normally do? So I kind of went down my mental checklist that I should have shared. And I said, then you need to go to bed. And so I went to bed and slept the rest of the day. I slept all night from there. I just went to bed at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Slept, got up at around 9 or 10 o'clock and had a bite and then went back to bed. Next morning, I felt fantastic. My body was just tired. And so, you know, I think that's a, that's a part of it. Um, Okay, uh, Terrence, I thank God for you, Doc. In the middle of my grief, you listened and called Mr. Brown, who called me. Wow, what a memory. Uh, thank wow. you. So when he, when he was struggling, I, he, he called me and we talked, and I, I connected him on the phone with Les Brown, which was something he, he really wanted to have happen. And Les, I'm sure, uh, was as gracious as he always is and so giving. One of the things, somebody asked me, is he like that all the time? He's always giving. He's all, Les Brown, the most giving, one of the most giving people I've ever so okay. you start with yourself and you find admit to yourself that you got a problem. If right. something's okay, not so right. you start with this, right? You start with me. It's moi. Mm-hmm. And so I admit- got a problem. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. I came up to you and I said, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, maybe sometimes men don't do it. Uh, oh, but I don't know if men or women, but men that say, I'm struggling. I got a problem. I'm not. All man, all world, all everything. I don't, I don't, I don't quite know what that means. Anyway. Sometimes it's a, it's a male ego thing, you know, or maleness. Or um, got to be strong. You got to suffer through and die. But we were told big boys don't cry. Okay, that's what we were told when I was little. Big boys don't cry. You know, you think with as much information I hear on the internet and everything, why, why? You, but you know, really interesting need... enough about that, my father was a crier. Did I ever tell you that? No, I don't. Yeah, he was. He would cry. You know? Really? Oh my God, he would. He would. He would cry. And so, about I, what? You know, loss of a friend. Oh, well, um, you see that? Um, something that you know was hurtful. Or, hmm. He would cry. I remember seeing him cry. So, um, how did how did I get that? Big boys don't cry. I don't know. Maybe my brother and I are trying. to... Big boys don't cry because I was the youngest. Suck it up, Willie. Suck it up. You know, okay, because I hurt my hand. I was always hurting something. I was always. You were a terror. Yeah, I was pretty bad. Okay. That's what everybody says. Uh, uh, Terrence said he had to learn how to cry because he was the big brother. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, so let's go back. Takeaway. You oh, start Terrence, with yourself. One more thing. Oh, what? The, the biggest part of his grief, he couldn't talk. He felt paralyzed. Mm. Maybe that's. What she was suffering. Maybe what she was suffering. And so. So how do you get unparalyzed? How did you get unparalyzed? Yeah, how did you get unparalyzed, Terrence? And anybody else who want to chat in the chat. And I know the people who are watching on YouTube and 
the recorded version, I know you can't chat with us, but always feel free to send us an email at info at willyjolly.com with your thoughts, concerns, ideas, and even uh, issues you might be. Or maybe you need to find someone that, like a therapist. Well, you need definitely. Well, we, you know, we're because big on therapy. Because to, to, you, you don't want, maybe if it's, I don't want them to see that I'm not handling it. If you seek someone who doesn't know you, uh -huh. who is neutral, yeah, then that might be easier for you to open up. And, and what's talk the, what's the and, and if you feel it. depressed, if you feel really depressed, what's the number that there's a number? Do you know is it the nine eight eight? That's the nine eight eight, um, uh -huh. which is the suicide hotline uh -huh. and, and and struggling with issues, the mental health issues, mental so. health issues, which is becoming popular mm. before it was not. But there's such a need for this, especially after COVID. Yeah. yeah. So you start with yourself. Terrence says therapy and prayer. It was God. It took you him about a year. Mm. Now, now this lady, it, obviously, it didn't happen a year because they ended up getting divorced. But we want people who are going through these struggles to know that therapy is wonderful. Counseling is wonderful. Grief counseling. We highly recommend grief. Life after. Look, we uh, can start, start with a book. Okay. All right. First is grief counseling. And second is a book we recommend to everybody who lost somebody, Life After Loss by Bob Dietz. And Dietz. we actually gave her a copy. Yep. D-E-I-T-S. Mm -hmm. Bob mm -hmm. Dietz. Best grief experience book experience i've had an experience when my mama died someone gave me a copy and i said okay i'm okay i'm okay i'm okay. but i just cracked it open and once i did i fell into that book i just collapsed into that book and i read the book from cover to cover not knowing that a few weeks later my brother was going to die and my father-in-law was going to die but it helped me so tremendously and then on top of that i got grief counseling and i, I took my family to grief counseling and got as many of them who were willing to go to go to grief counseling. And it makes you strong. Yep. It is not a sign of weakness. And I think with the counseling becoming more of an everyday accepted thing, mm -hmm. it makes it easier for people to say, Yes. Let me just seek some help. You know, more and more. And, and, and you know what, folks? I love something Les Brown said. He said, Asking for help doesn't make you weak. It helps to keep you strong. And I love that quote. Asking for help does not make you weak. It helps keep you strong. All right, I know you got some more research. That, that... So you want to focus on yourself first. Yes. Before you light into your partner, right? Right. Say, I'm struggling. Yes. So what do I need to do? I need to talk to somebody. Yes. And if you can't talk, talk. go to counseling or someone who's a neutral third party to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you'll know how to come back and say, let us do some things together. This is what I am struggling with and, and be able to explain it. And I need your help. And I don't feel like I'm being supported. Right. I don't feel like And again, I'm being it goes supported. back to the four Fs. Be friendly, be frank. This is how I feel. Or this is how something's making me feel. And discuss it. Be fair. Listen to commentary and be focused on a win-win. Okay. Uh huh. Some people have a fear of sharing. Yes. And, and because it shows vulnerability. Yes. That's that's just digging a little deeper. Yes. Fear. Are you willing to show to be vulnerable to show that you're vulnerable in order to get to feel better? It take it takes a lot of uh, of, of work. And to men probably have less willingness. willingness willingness to be vulnerable. vulnerable. But let me say this: that when you have a, a person who is your life partner or your Best friend. Your I best think. friend. I won't even say life partner. Yeah, your best friend. Your best friend. You are more apt mm. to tell them the truth. And you're more apt to say, this is this one's hard. I'm struggling here. This I need help. Or I need 
I need to talk through this because this is tough. So you got to find a safe space. That's right. And you know, space, and I think a, a lot individual. of uh, therapists and marriage counselors talk about finding those safe place spaces and where you, can you be space, space safe and where can you be open. Um, and sometimes. Oh, I want to deal with this for a second. Oh. Uh, Karen said women have to give men space to be to be vulnerable. Yes, and but I, I've got I got another situation with another couple where the husband, the the wife gives him space to be vulnerable, but he former marine and it's hard for him to do it, even when she gives him space to do it. So it's a give and take on both sides, I think. Clarence, I, I say that so it depends on the person. So and the personality. what do you do to make somebody to make your 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 spouse feel secure enough that they can be vulnerable. What do you do? Let's think you about gotta, it. You have to have conversation. You have to be... Uh, I think you have to... Empathetic. Be, okay. How can you become empathetic if you really don't know all of the sensitive push points of your of, of your mate. So you say you need to know your mate. You gotta, well, you have study to your mate. study your mate. That, oh. that, that's an action. Because she said study your the, mate. the husband kept saying, well, it's going to be all right. And, and that and she, was annoying her. Yeah, and she needed more than that. Okay, she needed and, But she didn't articulate, articulate that to mm -hmm. him. And he didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So, so this, that came again, up later. I thought it was such a profound conversation. Yeah. And I felt for her, I don't know him, but being in a situation of loss of someone close, I know that pain. And so um, I felt I felt for her. And I'm glad we, you know, blessed her with the book. But I'm encouraging people because now she's going through the loss of her brother. Right, right, right. But right, she right. still hasn't well, there's still some pain there from the the, the dad issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Then there's what else? I think those. I think really those that are the the main things. The difficult part is the communication. Communication which is what we keep coming back to with keep everything that that we talk about. All right, let's talk about what we say. So now. for those who might be new, get the free communication chapter. The That's biggest three. chapter in the book. Four, chapter four. And then get, get it free. the the. Get the TED Talk. And where do they get the TED Talk? Jollymarriage.com. Let me read this, this quote from the opening of the communication chapter. Communication in marriage is like oil in your automobile engine. It can be messy to handle, but without it, your engine will run poorly and eventually will lock up and bust. You must keep talking. And I know it's uncomfortable sometimes. It's very difficult sometimes, but you must keep talking. So sometimes I think for those who are really not great at communicating, and I have some young friends who are in technology, they're great at technology, but they're not great at communicating what they're feeling. And sometimes you have to give people some words or phrases to help them get started. Yes. Because you can talk to the machine and stuff all day in code, but with human beings, you have to be able to show emotion. Let me read, uh, 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 this is good right here. That, that This might help somebody. In the back of the communications chapter, we give some of the points that are most profound that we talked about in that chapter. Developing your listening skills. Ask questions and then be quiet while your spouse gets their chance to speak. Listen, listen, listen. Study what you just said, your spouse. Learn the meaning of their body language as well as the inflections in their voice. Reach, respect each other's communication style. Identify your spouse's communication style and discern the difference that reflects their emotions from being under stress to expression pleasure. It's not just what you say, but how you say it. And then create a space 
safe space safe, to communi- which is, communicate. Which is what we talked about. Yep, we're seeing mm-hmm. that. We hadn't even remembered that. Mm-hmm. Never talk over each other. Be open and honest in your conversations. Remember, you are not married to a mind reader. Now, that's important in this situation because they have to tell each other, here's what I'm feeling. He didn't know. And you got to be able to express that. And then you sweet talk. Okay. I think to study each other is so crucial. And when I say study each other, why are they doing what, what you're doing? Yes. Why are they doing what they're doing? For example, I still study you because you are a character. You make, you messy. make up stuff. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't. You so I stuff. study you so that when you zig, I can zag. You do so that. I, I I do that. You do that. And, and I I have adjusted. Yes, you have. Oh, yeah. Because you're you're ADD. Yes, I am. And and I remind myself. That's where my creativity of, comes from. Yes, I and like I, it. When I observe you, I'm like, mm, okay, I know what he's doing. And then I remind myself that when you do certain things, that I'm like, this is driving me crazy. This is what I'm saying to myself. This is driving me crazy. Yeah, I think. But you chose this. <laughs> okay, hmm. I can adjust. Let me have a little distance from him as he goes through when he's in his creative state and he's doing 10 things at one time. And I am focused on one, two, three. And he's like all over the place. And then I have to have a conversation with myself. And I'm just saying, this is what's going on inside. Hmm. And because I know intellectually that he's ADD and has all these, it still doesn't mean emotionally that it's easy for me to receive. Right. But I remind myself, I chose this. I love being with him. And this is just part of what came with the package. Right, right, right. And then I go to yoga. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Oh, is that uh, Carol Lee Jenkins? Is that your sister you're telling me? Okay, great. Carol is your sister. Hey, Carol, welcome. You're a sister of of Terrence's. You're a friend of ours. You're kin. You're kin. Welcome. Glad okay. okay. One more thing. Yes. One more thing. Yes. You like my new my new thing. One yeah. more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Yes. Valentine's Day is the 14th. Yep. And Ash Wednesday is the 14th. Yes. And Ash is. Wednesday is Willie Jolly. Ash Wednesday is the start of Lent. That's what it is. The start of Lent is 40 days of d- denying yourself as Christ was. Uh, 40 days in the wilderness. Now, actually, people, if you count them, they don't count the Sundays. Okay, so Oh, they don't days. count the Sundays? No, it's 40 days not counting the Sundays. Oh, okay. Just okay. so you know. Okay. So, so now. Easter. 40 days to Easter. Not okay. 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 And so last week, I, I spoke of that if you don't know what to say, just to be romantic, memorize. Oh, that was good last week. Memorize. How do I love thee? Let yeah. me count the ways. How do I love thee? Let me count. And that ways. was a poem from 1850 that was written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Yes. This week, I will add to that. Why don't you? And this doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. You could have seven cards. And so we have seven days. Just gives you opportunity to prepare. Seven days from the 14th. You can have a card a day. And on a card, you're going to simply put what I love most about us. Mm. On on a, a little three by five card, if you're really cheap, you can take a piece of paper, cut it in half, it already gives you four cards, and then you can do it again, and then throw one card away, you got seven days. <laughs> I like it, but I love you anyway. I love every little bit about you. Mm. So you can say, mm. on the card, you write, what I love most about us. Okay. And every day, just write one thing that you love about us, the relationship, and give it to your loved one or your partner in preparation for Valentine's Day. So we started talking about that. And what did I say? What did I want for Valentine's Day? I don't remember. What did you, what did you nothing. say? Nothing. Like, nothing. Because we had already talked about it. I know it doesn't sound I very romantic, but we were probably watching, uh, we're going to watch one of those movies. Here's the other thing, because he is a, what are you? I'm a voter. For mm-hmm. the SAG after. For SAG after. And so we get the movies and the like. And we just got Oppenheimer in. So maybe we'll watch Oppenheimer 
in bed because it's a three hour movie. You'll be asleep. We cannot do anything. <laughs> Look, let me tell you, I took her to the theater. I took her to the theater. And what's the big deal? You took her to the theater. I, I took her to the theater. And you know, I mean, to a play. You mean to a real play? A play. And. It wasn't ten minutes to twenty no, minutes. What was that? That was. Oh, don't say no, don't say the name because I don't want we we want to support our theater community. But whatever it was, uh, she starts. She didn't snore. I wasn't snoring. She just <laughs> on my shoulder, and then when they clap, she <laughs> the whole thing. So we can't watch no movies in bed. She's gone. Okay. Thank you, uh, Daryl Hollis. Is this, is this backwards? I love us. I this. love us. Nice? Yep. Yep. So, so, so now we've got seven days on the card. <laughs> he what says, I love about us, uh -huh. they just write something and leave it on their pillow <laughs> or leave it by their coffee <laughs> or leave it with their dessert. Something. Hey, nice Terrence said he's like you, just sleep in the, in the theater. So I'm not going to watch a movie in the bed. And we wouldn't take Terrence to the theater. Either. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so I'm going to have to have her watch in our theater room. And, uh, you know, that's the only our family. family room. Family room, theater room. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, our time is actually up. But I want to thank, uh, I want to thank, invite, I want to welcome Carol. Uh, Terrence's sister, and I'm uh, glad you joined us. Please tell everybody you know on Instagram to join us. Monday night's 9 o'clock. Everybody on Facebook Live, uh, LinkedIn Live, uh, Instagram Live, and... Everything Live. Everything. Twitter or X Live. Everything Live. And then please know that we also shout out our folks on YouTube who watch the replays. Lots of people watch the replays. We are so amazed how many people tell us they watch this show. We do want to let you know, if you're interested or you have a company that you might work for who says, I want to reach more people in the 34 to 54 demographic, couples, people interested in relationships, we are opening up our uh, opportunities for marketing sponsors and marketing partners. So please email us at info at willyjolly.com if you are interested or you know someone who's interested info at willyjolly.com we also want to encourage everybody to get marriage books for valentine's day great gifts to give to people jollymarriage.com we will sign them we will sign them so do that at jollymarriage.com thank you all for coming thank you for joining us remember the poem that's right. How do, how do I, I love thee? How do I love thee? Let, Let me, me count, count the ways. ways. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, the Coveras, thank y'all for your continued su support. They have bought so many books from so many people. I see Jerome Washington joining us. We got a lot of people joining this. Uh, don't say anything, but I'm glad who does. That's fine. We got didn't people. think about what I love most about us. I love the fact that I was smart enough to keep asking. You were persistent. I persisted. And I'm so glad you did. So I love, what I love about us is that you were persistent and did not give up. That's right. That's right. I didn't give up. Uh, I didn't give up. So, so anyway, thank y'all. Let's go out on my music. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.